What's up? So for the record, today's the 9th of March 2018. We're going to have a very controversial and, uh, yeah, relevant discussion with ongoing current events. As everyone is mostly aware of, that there was a shooting, another school shooting in Florida as of recently. And again, it's being chalked up to mental illness. Despite who is to blame, who is at fault, regardless of the gross negligence of the actual authorities in the local area, the sheriff's county deputies, the uh, FBI or whatever else, there's one thing that seems to all be in common regardless of who you want to point the finger at, right? Regardless of what part of the argument or side of the spectrum that you align with. That there needs, there seems to be some sort of willing negligence. There was no matter, again, no matter what side of the spectrum you want to blame, no matter where you're pointing fingers, the common denominator with everybody who was potentially involved or could have intervened or was uh, obligated to do so, didn't. And willingly chose not to. And that stems back to a very, um, very painfully obvious, at least to myself, an altruistic, um, objective reality that most people will be so thoroughly conditioned from birth to their death that they will not even be able to grasp or fathom or even relate or consider what I'm about to tell people. So on an astrological level, a mundane astro-sociological level, no matter what you look at, the 11th house is associated with organizations or sociological networks and institutions that are beyond your close-knit like groups of family or immediate neighborhood etc etc so regardless if you use medieval or ancient astrology which saturn would rule over the 11th house as well as the 10th house or uranus and you use modern translations for uranus as well that it's dysfunctional chaotic and if you use some uh you know translations for that like as i do it's a trauma signature so you think back to the word government in Latin. Government, the word ment, M-E-N-T in Latin, is the mind or the origin of all things, which is internal. Govern is to subdue, control, manipulate, or distort, just, you know, limit whatever is attached to it. That's why it's a, a multiple facet word, government. So government, the word government, translates directly to controlling, manipulating, or limiting the mind. The mind of who? Of everyone. So this just re reinforces the trauma signature with Uranus ruling the, 12th, uh, the 11th house and the malefic signature, if you look at ancient astrology, associated with the 11th house. You even reference Greek mythology and Uranus, which is the god of gods, essentially the father of Kronos and, and so it was Geisha and who's the mother earth goddess and Uranus who birthed Kronos, Kronos birthed Zeus and so the the origin of all things and yes the universe and the heavens itself is a trauma signature if you look at just astronomy in general and space science the the constant instability the you know collapsing of of, of stars and and meteors and there being you know violent crashes and imploding or you know even what Saturn's rings are created by one of the moons uh, colliding with Saturn and basically obliterating itself things of that sort even black holes and stellar masses this, even the shallow binary ones uh, exist primarily to suck in actual matter and star starlight and actual you know bo celestial bodies and then basically incinerate them and obliterate them and then explode them out in in all multiple directions even when you look at like the stellar masses and some of the huge galactic centers we are currently being in consumed and will eventually our galaxy in itself with the rest of them will be entirely annihilated by that massive black hole that's the event horizon with the super galactic center so yes the heavens themselves is even a trauma signature so that being said, I'm going to now reference some things that have been some of my own personal 
you know, challenges I've recently had, um, primarily to do with not only society, sociological governments, and any of the factions they're in, uh, being attributed to trauma signatures, but yeah, I'm going to play a little clip too off of YouTube. So primarily I'm going to be fixating on psychology. So yes, again, people are blaming the NRA. People are blaming the sheriffs. People are blaming, you know, the FBI. But And everybody is saying mental illness. But yet here's the one thing that people aren't acknowledging. They're saying we need to readdress how the mentally ill get a hold of guns. No, what we need to do is we need to go back to the foundation and we need to address... Who the fuck actually classifies abnormal psychology and mental illness? What are the actual organizations, associations, or academic, you know, panels, board panels that actually, you know, um, push or patent uh, pharmaceutical drugs to treat them, therapy uh, methods that are, are used, the way that we intervene with them, the way that they're, basically, you can distinguish or, you know, basically, uh, classify someone as potentially hazardous that should have help and that in itself right there I'm just gonna read off this actual list of different agencies or associations or organizations and just understand how many of these actually exist and this is just primarily in the United States and in America and why why if there's so many different facets of organizations how come they haven't gotten it all right and how come there's such a chronic neglect of people seeking therapy cognitive, you know, counseling, psychotherapy, or a way for us to actually catch all these things. So there's the AAAP, which is the American Association of Applied Psychology. There's the AACP, which is the American Academy of Child Psychiatry. There's the AAMD, which is the American Association of Mental Deficiency. There's the AAP, which is the American Academy of Psychoanalysis. There's the ACNP, the American College of Neuropsycho uh, psychopharmacology there's the medicine there and then the ACP which is the American College of Psychiatrists and the AJP which is the American Journal of Psychiatry then the AOTA which is the American Occupational Therapy Assist Association then the APA is a couple different facets the American Psychiatric Association the American Psychological Association and the American Psychoanalytic Association I find it very deceptive, by the way, that the, the acronym APA has three different branches of organizations representing it. I think that that makes it easy to blur the lines of where to blame. And the APPA is the American Psychopathological Association. These are all organizations, associations, and educational boards that, cla time. that classify, and Saturn time, that means I'm saying stuff on, that's going to really get people mad classify mental abnormalities, effective treatments, and educating the public on safety and threatening concerned persons in general. The rest of those are kind of just notes that I'm working on. So think of that for a second. And now I'm going to play a little clip here from a video that's on YouTube called Black Student Demands Reparations, Dinesh Brilliant's Response to Those Who Keep Black People Poor. Now, you, you referred earlier to the question of the ghetto. And whenever we look, whenever we see oppression, we have to ask, whom does it benefit? Whom does it benefit? Why do we have slavery in this country? Because it benefited people. There was work to do, and there were people who gained from it. Who does the ghetto benefit? Think about it. Does the ghetto benefit whites? How? Crime? Uh, dangers? Ex spending? No. The ghetto, the existence, the persistence of the ghetto benefits an activist class of researchers, professors, Social workers, a <laughs> if, if racism were to be abolished overnight, many of these people would be out of a job. That's about one minute. That being said, if mental illness and the effectiveness of being able to diagnose and actually help get people mental mental health evaluations and therapy were if that were actually, you know, resolved overnight all of these all these associations would be out of a job they wouldn't be getting federal money and there wouldn't be any necessary reason for their existence in general I haven't even gone through which this is the book I'm actually referencing it from by the way is the Dolan Psychiatry and Psychology Spellers this is actually just a reference book that gives me the exact um, spellings 
and just brief associations, it's not even a thesaurus or anything, of words that are attributed to that as well. I've got every single psychology book and plus duplicates known to man, which interestingly enough too, um, I, during the Saturn-Neptune square, which happened about two, it was a transit ongoing from like the end of 2014 into 2015 and some of the realignment triggers were happening in 2016. I happened to be a uh, simultaneously acquiring or accumulating massive amounts of books. Primarily, some of them were psychology. I have so many psychology books, it's not even funny. The the actual sociological influence with Saturn Neptune Square was primarily that the Saturn or government institutions or the elites or basically the the people in power, whoever those are, um, you know, um, basically are distorting, manipulating information, or hiding real information from people. So that was intuitive insight was, or basically my my connection with the spirit world were primarily leading me not only to cemeteries and everything, but specifically the only other place that I felt like I was pulled to a lot were random obscure yard sales, thrift stores, garage sales, you know, um, secondhand stores that had books. And not only have I acquired I don't even know how many, honestly, in all honesty. There were some times that I would find over a dozen books in one place, and I did that probably once every other week, if not a couple times a week, for a good duration of time. I have no idea. I have no idea how many I've acquired, but, um... I acquired every single psychiatry, psychology book I could think of, including a diagnostic statistical manual, which are nearly impossible to get. And, um, yeah, so let's kind of read off this because I feel like I'm, g I'm getting flustered and I'm starting to kind of lose my... Okay, so I wrote, Psychoanalysis, Behavioral Theory, and Narratives. Words are powerful, informative, coupled with an inf an informative coupled with behavior reveals an individual's perception a peek into their core all their vices and virtues and therein if you analyze behavior narratives over time along with actions of said individual it will reveal very important altruistic perspectives to what that person is all about their intentions secrets goals good and bad so if collective society an average joe citizen understood the core of psychoanalysis theory and theories of behavior and psychological mechanisms, the methods utilized by elites and organizations would fail to, to condition the large population and simultaneously reveal the actual agenda that's ongoing. Manipulation and study and the study of theories, fundamentals of psychology, is the latest modern equivalent to suppressing actual knowledge. Control of the mind, I already went over government and the core of government. By controlling what the mind knows, by manipulation of the mind from the beginning, knowledge is understanding and it equates to point of view, perspective, and wisdom. Knowledge is information. If you manipulate information by distorting facts, history, science, and methodology, and suppress any in in innovations by commandeering creation, commandeering of creations, mechanisms, and actions, and conditioning sociological condemnation of methodology that would be promoting self-efficiency and self-reliance, records of historical events, intellectual studies, and aid in the aid in the altruistic objectivity, such as astrology, which is actually forecasting synchronicity and understanding, uh, you know, patterns uh, in, in our uh, environment here on Earth and our lives, history, psychology, and science, the evolution therein, then you'll be able to basically subdue the masses. And the concept of psychology was always seen as a pseudoscience per se until it was thoroughly demonstrated and put to the test back into the 80s. And once it was actually determined by the powers that be how powerful and important psychology is, that's when suddenly the actual altruistic theories began to be suppressed. So here's another book here called 30 Second Psychology. I actually love this book. So it's the 50 most thought-provoking psychology theories, explained in a half a minute. 
So old school and new school. I'm just going to go over some of the stuff I have um, highlighted. Watson's behaviorism theory. This individual was a uh, lived from 1878 to 1858 or 1958, sorry. And the only reliable evidence is something that you can measure directly. For psychology, this means we should only talk about behavior, not about mental states. And psychoanalysis which this was obviously Sigmund Freud essentially and he lived from 1875 to 1961 and it's the unconscious motivating forces play a central role in shaping our behavior but are also the primary cause of mental illness. So psychoanalysis is the ego is pulled to and fro from the ID to the superego giving rise to personality conflicts when the ego is overwhelmed by its ideas demands we become neurotic and when it, when, uh, it gives into them the superego punishes the ego with guilt. Ego copes by means of neurosis and dreams, which fulfill the ID's suppressed desires. Defense mechanisms, repression, denial, which reduce anxiety. Mechanisms can be patho uh, path pathogenic and are a major cause to mental illness. Sigmund Freud is overall condemned or basically just chalked up to being, yeah, he was the founder and you know, he's kind of kooky. It's the same concept with, you know, medical students and, uh, you know, medical majors understanding and taking the Hippocratic Oath, but not actually understanding the altruistic origin of Hippocrates and everything that he studied therein, which quote-unquote was also astrology and so the Socrates' fifth essence of your environmental factors correlate with the seasons in which you're born will predetermine your nutrition, the health uh, ailments or predispositions you may develop, and etc, etc. The Cognitive Revolution your mind is a machine storing and processing information. That was uh, an individual that lived from 1926 to 1993. Let me see here, what have we got? Neuroplasticity. What you do and think can change the structure of your brain. Yes. I thoroughly demonstrated that numerous times, not only with myself and my vlogs, having Pluto conjunct with uh, Mercury causes transformation and changes or whatever drastic, yeah, um, kind of, you know, leveling up or whatever else or regressions all the time. So, the principle is it operates throughout the lifetime, not just childhood. Concepts of neuroplasticity is tied to the idea that we can change how we think and our abilities throughout our lifetime and that keeping mental activity can keep us, uh, remain flexible and alert in older age. Moving on, decision making and emotions, stimulates, uh, stimulates a response in certain instances, the strength of psychological stimulus may elicit an uncontrolled physical response such as nervous twitches or spasms, or yeah, sub subliminal conditioned behavior. The, then the um, festering's boring task, it says whenever you pair an incompatible belief with decisions and decisions collide, in our minds, it provokes a kind of mental discomfort called cognitive dissonance. Most people have heard of cognitive dissonance. If you believe one thing, yet do or say another, in the absence of any external justification for an anomalous behavior, the contradiction is resolved by altering the original belief, basically ra rationalizing what you did. Emotional decision making. It, in the late 1970s, uh, part there was an American neurologist, Antonio Damasio, who, who uh, did some observational experience when certain parts of the brain were damaged people found it difficult to make decisions so it's uh do you make decisions using cool logic or hot emotions yeah Hold on. keep going all these theories are great but i've got some really good highlighted parts the janus group thinks so this was in 1961, a groundbreaking study showed that, in fact, groups make more, polar, more polarized decisions than individuals. Certain conditions can lead to a particular extreme form of group polarization called groupthink, in which dangerous illusion of the con consensus takes over. Preconditions for groupthink include members being close-knit and like-minded, and the group being shut off from influences and opinions, safe spaces. History shows that groups that are capable of making are groups are capable of making terrible decisions, especially when they were cut off from dissenting opinions. Groups of like-minded individuals shut off from outside influence can end up ignoring dissent and making some truly disastrous decisions. Yep. 
that was in the 60s and people what's what what uh terrifies me is that today with there being such a huge surge of quote unquote majors in college being in social studies and psychology and sociology that that is not that is not actually something that's known to to all of them it's not like you know basic fucking 101 and then the stereotype threat fearing that if we perform badly other people will use this as evidence to reinforce prejudice prejudices that can cause us anxiety and poor performance if you fear that your performance will be used to reinforce stereotypes about your sex age or race the situation could unfortunately become self-fulfilling that's the whole concept of white guilt right now but again people don't and then the follow the leader theory yeah that was uh, in the 1970s i didn't highlight any of this one but the best leaders are bold and charismatic, right? No, I. social identity theory says people tend to follow the most uh, prototypical members of their group. So that's the whole u utilizing or uh, using um, celebrities, narratives, and people like having this whole, you know, group, um, like, you know, groupy kind of admiration for them and, and them just um, m mimicking or, or echoing what some of their their favorite uh, celebrities are saying. I swear to God, this book was is just like has a play-by-play -play every single freaking theory. Some of these I haven't even highlighted all of them, but yeah. Ugh. I I could go on and on. I could do a whole thing on this, but all of the theories that are in here are. Once introspection, Watson's behaviorism, psychoanalysis, the cognitive revolution, evolutionary psychology, positive psychology, Paget's stages, uh, the birth order, Harlow's monkeys, uh, Kohlberg's moral stages, neuroplasticity, Ekman's universal emotions, Finkster's boring tasks, James Lane theory of emotion, Damasio's emotional decision making, uh, Watson's confirmation bias, Braumeister's ego depletion, uh, Kenman's prospect theory, the bystander effect, Janice's group think, all ports contact hypoth uh, hypothesis, Zimbardo's prison, Milgram's obedience study, stereotype threats, follow the leader, the lake Wobegon uh, effect, the big five, fundamental attribution error, nature versus nurture, the Flynn effect, Erickson's uh, 10,000 hour rule, nominative uh, determinism, Sperry split brains, Tarot's hysteria, Rosanin's insane places, Maslow's humanistic psychology, Beck's cognitive therapy, extreme male brains, the placebo effect, Plaslow's dogs con classic conditioning, universal grammar, embodied cognition, Miller's seven, and consciousness. So this is just more of a, a Reader's Digest version of all this. But the fact that this is a, a lot of these theories were at least thoroughly documented or or you know known uh, to the general public or at least those who are studying psychology back into the 50s and 60s and then all of a sudden there was this manipulation of knowledge not only in the psychiatric field but with news with um this stems back to, you know, modern health medicine and everything like that and, and actual FDA, CDC, like, oh my god, um, yeah, um, so think about it, in the 60s, the Uranus-Pluto square conjunction, Pluto's all about power manipulation and it's all about psychology, right? And Uranus is the 11th house of sociological institutions or the powers that be, right? So when they conjuncted in the 60s, that basically gave all of the power or there was essentially the you know generational trigger to basically manipulate and take control over every facet of you know um, influential things in modern day society and culture the way that we process information the way that information is stored the way that we share things the way that you know people in the know actually get to know information while keeping everybody else stupid and we're dealing with this Uranus Pluto square, we're dealing with the repercussions of basically that manipulating and suppressing of information things. And 
so yet again the the uh, basically the repercussions of what is being it intentionally buried from the 60s onward is now surfacing and instead of actually the the real reason coming out or you know somebody who actually knows just voicing and saying hey this is actually why because either they get killed off or you know they're still you know in cahoots with whatever today um, that they're trying to deflect responsibility and accountability to other things that just don't make sense yeah and the whole neural neuroplasticity thing psychosomatic stuff and continuing to like point fingers at things that actually don't make sense the more that you condition people even if they don't believe everything they see on TV even if they don't pay attention to it the subliminal perception of what they pick up the more that there's con, con contradictions with what they actually visually see and experience and what they're being told the more neurotic and uh, yeah unstable people get mentally all over the place which is evident by most people's reactions to you know altering points of view and and uh, why there's so many people just doing really psychotic fucked up shit because of their whole warped and distorted misunderstanding of what's really going on and yeah the society is actually conditioning us to be psycho and because they're actually conditioning us to be psycho sick fat and die from terminal illness be have poor health and basically not be able to be healthy functioning members of society they're they're you know making us fat and sick uh, by giving us toxic food lying about it and then they're they're actually orchestrating and and setting the stimuli the the environment to actually cause compulsive you know abnormal adverse psychology and mental instability and basically it inhibiting people to make logical rational choices and then using that as justification to actually imprison people or to not only govern and imprison the mind but to physically actually imprison people themselves it's moving on to a whole other level yeah it's just a progression of the downward spiral of that and that's why Nostradamus references the three antichrists he doesn't say that as their devils but his cryptic uh, translation for an antichrist is supposed to be someone who is against who is against gods who's against the spirit or who's against the actual progression therein regardless on a on a individual like reincarnated level of humanity or collectively so those that would be against our spirit or our spirits you know it direction or the overall consensus more or less because it's more of an enigma of collective consciousness on that side of the spectrum on the spirit world side would be people who are inhibiting or harboring or basically um, altering or stopping individuals from following their individual path, their individual life progression and lessons therein and making them succumb and, and conform to a universal cookie cardboard cutout thing that would be completely um, counterproductive and destructive to the individual life lessons and experiences that they're supposed to you, you know uh, explore throughout this life. That's why the, the Bible and religious scriptures specifically you know it or illicitly it explains that there is no rule of law above God and that the rule of man will always be inferior to God's law and that's natural law essentially you, you can't you know change death or your mortality or the limitations therein you can't uh, you can't defy the as above so below sorts of things and yeah it's just the whole I kind of just lost my train of thought with that. <sighs> to be continued, I guess.